Hello group, Jeff here. I am in the great outdoors of Buffalo, New York, celebrating a Bill's win. So I have uh, decided to try to show how I set up for a session. And I'm on the pinwheel. And uh, this is the DS10 C Tech. And I will go, just go through all of my settings and then I'll kind of go through what I think I do. So I really don't like a lot of gain. I'm a kind, I, I just, it bothers me to have a lot of gain because I post process. And gain is great for quick looks. So what I would do is I would use a lot of gain to find my objects and then I'll back way off. And uh, generally, depending on the camera, I hardly ever go over 50% of what the, the gain can do. So in this case, I think this machine can go, or this camera can go to 160. I'll never go above 80, ever. <laughs> Except to find the, the target. So I'm at 40, I'm a gain. I am currently in trigger mode. 20 seconds, and that's just so we can see what we're looking at over here. My bit depth is 8. My weight balance is uh, pretty good, actually. I like to white balance on dark. I never, unless it's a planet or the moon, I never white balance on the target itself. I always try to find black. Uh, I, I feel that it gives the best colors. That's just me. My hue is zero. I like a little saturation, not a lot. Brightness, I always leave it zero. Uh, contrast, I bump up a little bit because I like I'm a I like the contrasty feel for, of things. Some people don't. And my gamma, I'll explain how I treat my gamma in a second. But you can see it's on 130. My frame rate is high. It's color. I am not flipping or uh, rotating. My sample rate is been I have no region of interest I'm binning at additive two times and my histogram we will not talk about just yet I have no darks I'm in the process of making darks so you'll probably see some hot pickle pixels in here but don't worry about it I have no flat field corrections my black level is the standard three. And I'm currently not live stacking. <clears throat> Excuse me. But when I do, I align the frames. I like eight. I'm always average. Uh, sometimes I jump around. Depends how the software acts. If I can do a deep sky object with deep sky, I, I'll do it. My conversion gain is high. My cooling is zero on sharpen. I never go above 50 anymore. Since the uh, upgrade to the latest software, this is not the most current software. Uh, but when this software came out, which I think was July, uh, I no longer need a lot of sharpen. So I don't use it. All it does is add noise. I have no uh, nothing going on with miscellaneous, and my preset is just the stock preset uh, that is from the load. So what I try to do 
is this little guy right here is what's determining how much exposure I'm giving the object. Any more than the 20 seconds, and this guy will start to blow out. And I don't want him to blow out. I want it to be there, just as you see it. My core is looking good. So I'm pretty happy with this image. And again, my gain is at 40, and I'm in trigger mode 20 seconds. I like to use the gamma. Because basically what I'm doing is I'm overexposing. And then I'm bringing it back with the gamma. So if we go to zero or one, you will see that my histogram goes to the right. And that's just a little bit too far for me. And you can see down here, this guy is starting to get a little hot. So I'll use the gamma to push the histogram back. And that gives me a couple of things. Oops, I was using contrast, I'm sorry. I was wondering why that didn't work. <laughs> Let's try that again. We'll go back to one. And you can see what the histogram did. It moved to the right, whitened up the image, and I'm starting to blow out this thing. And I don't want to blow this guy out. So I use the gamma slider to bring my exposure back. Or not my exposure, my histogram hump back so that it's passed to the left of 50. So in my eyes, anything between 30 and 40 is actually pretty good, and I think I'm probably pushing 40 with this shot. So I'm kind of happy. I like where the black point is in the image. So I'm going to close this. And then I'm going to go like, so I can see the histogram and the live stack. Because I use the output number for my LDHR. And I don't do gain anymore or exposure anymore. I find that it just raises hell with the histogram. And I'm not looking to do that. So the way I currently have my histogram set up, I have a lot of room. I've got my black where I want it. I had room to do that. I've got a lot of room to move the white, and that's what I want. So I'm going to start the stack. And I should have mentioned, if I didn't, I have a little sharpen. I think I did mention it, but I'm, I'm at 50% in the sharpen. So our image is just a little noisy, and that's from the sharpening. So we've got one in the queue, and it generally takes uh, double one frame for uh, the aligned frames to do its thing. So that was about 40 seconds, and you can see that I've got some good structure right in here. I've got some really nice things going on here, and I'm not blowing it out, which is what I want. Excuse me, I've got two setups going today, so I'm making a little move on, on my other setup. So one of the things that I really like about moving the histogram is that the hump doesn't move. And that's, that's the secret to getting really good 
images that you can then take into post and process them because you, you're not adding noise. You're just adding, uh, you're moving the white point, which is going to brighten up or darken up. You can move, in some cases, you can even move into the hump a little bit on the black point, but I don't like to do that. So I'll go eight frames and see what it looks like. And what I mean by that is I'll zoom in and look at this noise. Here's my hot pixels. We aren't going to pay any attention to those. And the noise is clearing out, and this noise is from the Sharpen. So I have a feeling that the noise is probably going to be here uh, up to 16 frames. So I'm probably going to have to go to the, the full 16 frames on this before I move my white point. And the reason for that is I like to remove the noise, as much noise as I can before I start doing my LDHR stuff. And that really helps me in post. But this is really looking pretty good. I'm not guiding. Uh, I have... Uh, the guide scope open, but there's a lot of haze in the air today from uh, it's very humid. So that generally, if this camera isn't that sensitive, and when it gets hazy out, it has a hard time getting stars. So I don't really worry about it. But this image is looking pretty sweet, and I haven't done anything yet. Noise is starting to clear out. Got a little more to go. I've got a uh, little hay fever going on here. So, gotta love it. Need one more frost and I'll be good, good to go. So I've got uh, 10 frames in the queue. Right there, 11 now. Noise is starting to clear out nicely. This is gonna look good, even without a dark frame. And this is what uh, my buddies have a hard time with me because I'm doing this in 20 seconds, so I'm accumulating uh, 24, 20 second frames. Unbelievable. <laughs> Just unbelievable. They'll spend all night or multiple nights to get something it will definitely look better than this because they they're averaging more data than we are uh, but you know I can do this and go to another one in one night multiple objects so I think in 16 frames I'm going to be happy with the noise yeah this is looking pretty good so what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start moving my white. And I'm going to move it a lot because uh, this is the, the new tweak that I found that instead of moving uh, the whatever you do, whether it's gain, exposure, or the white point, in my case, instead of moving in smaller increments quicker, I just let the stack build up to accumulate that good base. And once I've got that good base where the noise is gone, then I move the slider a lot. I mean a lot. And what that does is it will uh, start back end loading that, those brighter frames, and then I can stop the stack at any point, or in my case, I make a snap, and I'm done.
and I generally never go over 32 frames anymore, ever. So I'm going to start moving. And let's see. What that does. And if it starts getting a little too white on me, then I'll start moving the black into the hump. Just a tickle. Not a lot, just a little bit. And that keeps that brightness down. Uh, and I've even gone uh, where it brightened up a little too much, and I backed off on the on the white point and let that build back into the, the stack again, and that, that saved the stack. And we can already see right in here, this stuff is starting to build right through there. And that's in a couple frames. And we are not blowing this guy out. Right in here, you can see a lot of detail is now building in here that wasn't there before, in here, in here, in here. This is gonna be a gorgeous little image. And the, I'm not, the, what I've found is that that base stack layer, so whether it's 16 frames or 24 frames, however you wanna do it, as long as you've got that good base, then when you throw a lot of white at it, it will build in quick. As you can see, I started this at 17 frames. We've got uh, 24 now, and this thing is looking sweet. And this is an LDH, or mo uh, not movie, but uh, image. And I've made two moves, <laughs> not 100, or I'm exaggerating, but I think you get the point. A lot of nice detail in here now. Start to see some really good detail. And we are not blowing this guy out. It's getting a little brighter, but we're not blowing him out. This thing is starting to come. This is really looking good. I think I might just move the black point a little bit. Four points. Keep it darkened. Not bad, guys. And right now the pinwheel is looking off. Um, just catching the edge of a light dome from the city, and I have uh, the Celestron uh, light pollution filter in today. I wanted to see what this looked like, and it's looking pretty good. The 29, 28 output frames, 29. Thirty. So it just might go a little bit. We've only got two more frames to build it here. Just push the weight a little more. Beautiful image on my monitor. And this computer is the seven-year-old Lenovo that I just keep pushing and I'll push it until it dies. 
Uh, we got one more frame here. So make a snap. And there it is. And then I'll save it. This is uh, 20 seconds, exposure stack of 32, sharpen 50, save. Beautiful image. Got a lot of stuff going on down here. This is just a gorgeous image. Now this is uh, with the C14. And uh, I'm just going to let this go out a little bit more. Um, maybe to 40 frames, see what happens. You can see how when we start pushing the weight, this little this stuff down in here started to come out. And we're getting uh, more of the bands. We're starting to see behind the these darker areas. Getting a little more detail in here. Gorgeous, gorgeous image. Now you can see because I'm not tracking, there's a little black line right here, and I have a little drift. Not bad, but just a little bit of a drift. Wow, this is really looking good. Very dramatic. <laughs> and I haven't even post-processed this thing yet. Gorgeous. Okay, it's got 39. You can see now we're starting to get a little, we're starting to lose just a tickle here. I mean, this thing is looking gorgeous. Oh my God. Doesn't take much to <laughs> get me excited. Whew. So everyone has always wondered how I make my images. Now you know. So I'm gonna go out to uh, 48 and I'll probably stop it there because the white the white is starting to overpower. And I think that's probably the best we're going to get out of this. Gorgeous. Excuse me. Very humid tonight. For all the pushing we're doing, we still have the detail in this. We're starting to lose it a little bit, but that base stack kept it. And that's 
how I can't wait to see what this will do on uh, Orion, this technique. Very promising. I mean, this thing is gorgeous in through here. Just beautiful. I might even push the black a little more. One, two. Gorgeous. And the, and the, in my eye, because you don't have to worry about the histogram moving, and you gave yourself enough room on the left for the black, and you gave yourself a lot of room on the right for the white, there is so much you can do with just moving those, uh, the white and the black point. Um, and it's, you you get a feel for it. You If you do it enough, you'll eventually get a, without even looking at the image, you, or let me revise that, you're looking at the image and you're thinking to yourself, I know where it's going. If I do this, boom. And look at all of this detail we picked up by just moving the white point. Unbelievable. Stuff that was not there. And the key is to get that exposure right. So you overexpose a little bit, not a lot, and then you use the gamma to bring that exposure down, or the histogram hump back to the left so that you're between 30 and 40. And I'm probably right about on 40. Jeez, I would have snapped this. Have it. This is 52. Unbelievable. Went a little too far. <laughs> I get to looking at the image and I lose track. That's the other thing. You don't have to worry about being as precise as you would uh, with the gainer exposure and then you're messing around with a histogram. This, you're just moving two sliders. That's it. Well, I hope that you now have a better appreciation for how I set my stuff up uh, to get those wonderful looking images that I've been making. I still can't believe it. I mean, I used to spend days to get something like this that I'm getting in a half hour, maybe. <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, group, I'm going to call it, and we'll see you on the group. Thank you.